What's a mildly horrifying fact not everyone knows? Story one, Hurricane Aaron was on a direct path towards the Northeast coast in early September, 2001. It made a sudden turn in the Atlantic away from the US. If it hadn't turned, it could very well have hit the East coast on 9-11, which would have grounded flights on the East coast and prevented, or at least delayed, the 9-11 attacks. Story two, there's such a thing as hair splinters. Hairdressers deal with it all the time after cutting particularly coarse hair. The small pieces can stick in you like a splinter and pose risk of mega infections if you're unable to get them out. I've seen a stylist friend of mine lose a whole finger due to one tiny sliver of hair. Story three, I'm permanently barred from donating blood because I was a US soldier stationed in Europe when US bases were being supplied with English beef during the late 80s, early 90s. If I've got it, allegedly a slim chance, but who trusts the VA? Then somewhere around age 60, I'll get rapid onset dementia and die within a year. Yay, I started a 10 year countdown this year. Story four, breast milk is the filtered blood of the mother. Certain proteins are removed, others are added, and the lipids are concentrated. Human breast milk looks like liquid gold under a microscope and can change nutritional content to match the baby's needs in as little as seven seconds after proper latching. Story five, doctors actually don't know much about the brain. Someone could get a brain injury and they have no idea whether they'll recover or not. They thought they'd have to do a bone graft or amputate my brother's leg, but because of his brain injury, he was neurostorming. The storming caused more bone to grow in his femur, so he didn't need the bone graft or have his leg amputated. They didn't think he would recover this far. I've learned in the past seven months that as long as someone isn't brain dead, they can recover more than you think. Story six. It seems the nukes the US accidentally dropped on South Carolina are pretty common knowledge on Reddit, but I hardly ever see people mention the time we literally let a one megaton nuke roll off the deck of an aircraft carrier stationed off the coast of Japan. It sank to the bottom where it was considered too deep to be recovered. There supposedly isn't any danger of it going off, but there is a good chance it's been leaking small amounts of radioactive material. Story seven, there's a very real possibility that what we think of as a pure vacuum is not in fact a true vacuum, and that empty space itself can collapse into a lower energy state. This would result in a catastrophic and spontaneous outburst of energy that would expand outward at the speed of light. Not only vaporizing everything it touches, but fundamentally changing the laws of space-time in such a way that it is entirely possible no matter could ever exist again. We could be doomed to an instant death by a light-speed energy wave heading towards us right this minute, and we wouldn't know. Death would occur more quickly than our brains could register. We would all simply cease to be, and the entirety of human history, all of our glories and achievements rendered meaningless. Story 8. Paleontologists have found tons of human skulls with holes in them. Ancient doctors used to think that headaches or migraines were caused by bad spirits in the skull, so they would cut a hole to let them out. They have even found skulls that showed signs of healing, meaning they lived. The percentage of skulls they have found like this is higher than the percentage of people with red hair now. Story 9. Something truly horrifying that very few people in the West know about is China's bear bile farming industry. It is completely legal to keep sun bears locked up in cages, immobilized, sometimes their whole lives, up to 30 years with a syringe and a tube stuck into their gallbladders in order to harvest their bile, which is used in Chinese medicine. Get this, there are cheap alternatives, but people want the real thing, so these awesome creatures get tortured every day of their lives. It is now illegal in Vietnam, but still happens in Thailand and tons in China. Story 10. A strange lay is a hypothetical particle that is composed of up, down, and strange quarks. For comparison, a proton is composed of two up quarks and a down quark, and a neutron is composed of an up quark and two down quarks. If even one were to touch some part of the planet, we'd be utterly annihilated. See, due to the way that subatomic particles interact, large collections of strange matter are thought to be more stable than smaller ones. The bigger a given strange mass is, the harder it is, so to speak. As such, all it would take to completely doom the Earth is a strange lay the size of a helium atom. Because when baryonic matter, atoms made up of protons and neutrons, comes into contact with strange matter, it gets converted into strange matter. The chain reaction would reduce the planet, and everything on it, to a huge, hot, homogeneous, strange star, and there would be absolutely nothing we could do about it. In other words, it might only be a matter of time before a single particle wipes us out. Wouldn't that be strange? Story 11. Anthony is a name of Etruscan origin. We know so little about Etruscans because Rome consumed their culture and they merged, up to the point that the meaning of the name Anthony and the eternal mix of concrete are unknown to this day. 
Although the concrete was figured out some time ago, Anthony is still a mystery. Who knows how many things we will never know due to cultures being forgotten by time or consumed by larger units, and how many instances of that are happening right now. Story 12. Eva Toguri, Dakino, an American born to Japanese immigrants, was visiting relatives in Japan when World War II broke out. Arrested by Imperial Japanese forces, she was forced to write and broadcast propaganda to the American forces under the call sign Orphan Anne, one of many Tokyo Roses, because in an era of strong militarism and international trade and importing, Japan was highly isolationist, so those in Japan who could speak Japanese knew nothing about what to actually say. After the war, Dekino was arrested, charged, and jailed for 10 years for treason for broadcasting propaganda for the enemy, despite the fact that the case against her was weak. This was in spite of the fact that it was proven that she was risking torture or execution if she refused, and the fact that many GIs held in Japanese POW camps testified that Diakino had smuggled food and medicine into the camps. She was the victim of a witch hunt fueled purely by greedy congressmen looking out for their own political ambitions, with the sole solid evidence being a heavily altered account of her own admission and the testimony of two accusers who later admitted had been forced to lie on the stand by persecutors, having been coached for over two months by congressmen and the FBI. During the highly strained court proceedings, she suffered a miscarriage as a direct result of the court's harassment. Her husband, an Italian national, had his citizenship to the U.S. revoked, and he was deported to Italy. If she followed him, she would also lose her American citizenship, and it was unlikely she'd be allowed to stay in Italy either. Story 13. The Cold War Era Dead hand nuclear control system is believed to still be active in Russia. The system is an example of a fail deadly system, as opposed to fail safe, designed to maintain deterrence by automatically sending the signals to launch nuclear weapons if certain sensors indicating a nuclear attack on Russia are tripped. Because the USA, unlike the USSR and later Russia, has never publicly disavowed a first strike doctrine, the system is designed to maintain mutually assured destruction even if a first strike wipes out Russian leadership before they could give an order to respond. On the one hand, this could be seen as an admirable attempt to maintain peace through assured destruction without ever being the aggressor. The problem is that the system is inherently fail-deadly. If the sensors are tripped, up go the rockets, and it's too late for any mistakes. From what little information is publicly known, the automated aspects of the system are supposedly not continuously activated and it is only turned on during emergencies when threat of a strike is seen as high. However, what counts as that, nobody knows. And it's certainly technologically possible that the system is on far more than might be thought just to guard against that possible first strike. Story 14. Given 13 weeks and a quarter and building a condensed calendar of logical testing dates with Apex 25 criteria to code an automated script to automatically build said calendar has more testable combinations, then there are atoms in the observable universe, yet a human can build that calendar by hand, with a few years of practice, in under five weeks. The horrifying part we are getting to, to run that script, which I attempted, would have taken over two billion years to execute a full regression, assuming the last combination was the only valid one, yet all because of one simple fact. Some, not all, criteria can overlap. Month end could also be the third consecutive day and be a Friday. If it wasn't for overlapping criteria tests, the same setup would take less than an hour to run. The difference is maddening at times. Yet the human brain is so terrifyingly, or in this case, mildly horrifying, that it can intuitively do that same process and complete it in under 200 labor hours. My peer could do it in two weeks, 80-ish hours. How absurdly powerful the human brain is compared to a computer is, really when you think about it, fascinating and terrifying at the same time. That same mind can be put to work on good things and bad. And yet the mystery of how a blinker works is still a mystery most cannot seem to solve. Story 15. Bill Clinton used the state police, his bodyguards, to get him women. If a cop with a gun comes to you, are you really going to say no? He also allegedly spent state money on getting hotel rooms and used state cars to ferry these women around. Your tax dollars at work. In at least one case, a government clerk who was on the clock, Clinton was also on the clock got summoned by a cop with a gun to the hotel. She thought maybe it was work-related. Clinton tried to force her into a intercourse. She didn't want it and left. He threatened to tell her boss. He pulled strings to have her bullied by her co-workers and supervisors years after the fact. When she sued, he sent goons after her lawyers and had them wiretapped. He also sent the IRS after her. Also, when a conservative newspaper wrote about it, 
they were under the impression that it was consensual, they were allegedly also wiretapped. Also, Clinton's lawyer smeared her by mentioning that she had unclothed pics out there. Story 16. When pineapples sort of sting the inside of your mouth, this is because the enzyme bromelain is attempting to digest the inside of your mouth. There's exfoliant products for your face based on this chemical and also on papain from papayas. You have to make sure to only leave them on for as long as directed and then wash them off thoroughly because otherwise your skin can become really red and irritated because the enzymes attempted to digest your face too much when they were only meant to take the bits of skin that were already dead. Story 17, lobotomies and shock therapy, now called psychosurgery and electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, are still used today in very extreme cases, although not as dangerously as back when they were first created. Lobotomies, psychosurgery only target very specific and small parts of the brain. Think like one tiny spot of the frontal lobe, not just taking an ice pick and going feral, and are mostly for the most severe cases in which no other treatment has worked like major depression and OCD, which are known for being the most treatment resistant. Shock therapy, ECT, is done while a patient is under anesthesia in a hospital setting and with small doses of electric currents, with some cases using outpatient procedures, aka you go home afterwards. The main side effect seems to be confusion, as well as some memory loss from before the treatment, but otherwise, there aren't as many as when we were using large doses of electricity while the patient was awake. Story 18. The Earth is due for an awful deadly solar storm about every 150 years. The last one was 157 years ago. This? It doesn't sound like anyone died, mainly because they didn't have the technology that we currently do and our reliance on said technology. The idea behind a deadly solar storm is that the EMP will fry all electronics, sending us back, technology-wise, to the early 1900s. Due to this, the massive transformers at power stations will not work and can't be replaced anytime soon because they are all specialized units and pretty much different from each other, can't be rebuilt, and a replacement would take months, years, assuming that there is a country able to manufacture one with the plant online. Due to the lack of electricity, fuel will run out. The ships, trucks that bring food to stores will not be able to run, and depending, Vehicles won't run either due to the electronics being fried, and lots of people will die off in starvation. Allo, you'll have a lack of potable water, which will cause people to catch related diseases, example dysentery, and die from them. Basically, imagine this. Current state of Puerto Rico, but globally. There wouldn't be any government to help anyone, because all the people are trying to eat and drink and not get themselves killed by someone trying to take whatever meager possession that they would have. Story 19. It's entirely possible that the universe as we know it is a false vacuum, and that somewhere in the universe is a bubble of true vacuum, expanding at the speed of light, destroying everything in its path. We'd receive no warning, since it travels at the speed of light and cannot be observed. One moment we'd be here, the next we'd be gone, along with the entire universe eventually. Well, that's going to give me anxiety for quite a while. Luckily, the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light, other galaxies are moving away at FTL speeds thanks to the expansion of the universe. Even if that theory is true, the phenomenon would have to happen in a relatively close area for us to not be able to outrun it. The only problem is that eventually all of our close galaxies will merge into one while all the others drift away until all we can see is an infinite black void of nothing while we wait for the universe to go through heat death. Story 20. Climate change has progressed past the point of no return. Not only are we on track for a bad outcome, we're on track for the worst possible version. Hundreds of millions are going to become starved, thirsty, climate refugees, and no amount of walls, armed drones, or razor wire is going to stop half the planet from trying to take what the luckier half has. This is going to happen over the next 100 years, but there are already 11 major cities about to run out of water. It's happening, and there's nothing you can do to stop the hell that's coming. Story 21. The amount of trust you have to put in people your entire life. Teachers, one could be a kidnapper. Doctors, one could be trying to harvest your organs. Even your own partner could be a murderer. Though the chances of running into one of these types of people is extremely rare, the chance that you could be associated with one is terrifying to me. In the same vein, I'm always worried when putting my luggage in the special end of the compartment in a train. I never got anything stolen, but all the passengers leave their heavy luggages there with the assumption and trust that no one will steal it and no one ever does, at least not that I've seen throughout Europe. Baffling, considering people can be such jerks all the time. Story 22. I think it's, if you put the time scale of the universe on a clock, 
the death of every imaginable object and atom would have happened right around 6 a.m. From henceforth is a cold eternity, for which space is empty and vast. No longer will clusters form, nor will the clouds of space exist. Long have the black holes reigned, but by then even they have met their end, all before reaching sunrise. The universe will remain for eternity a vast nothing, where everything ceased to exist billions upon billions of eons ago. What we are at now is nearly the jump start of the universe, while also being relatively close to the end of the birth of stars. From then, it's a waiting game of hollow nothingness. This has tormented my mind since I was in high school, and now, as an adult, I can still say this makes me uneasy and somewhat unimportant in the thoughts of existence. Story 23. The fact that conscious and intelligent life exists at all. When you look at the fundamental matter that makes up every object in the universe, everything is made up of atoms, molecules, and certain combinations of periodic elements. These in themselves are not living matter, so at what point did a certain combination of these things become a conscious life form? And what about an actual self-aware, intelligent life form like a human as opposed to simpler bacteria? We are still made of the same matter as objects that are not considered alive. So where does consciousness come from? The evolution of our brains, all things considered, is really interesting. Story 24. Every once in a while, our sun just emits a solar flare big enough to end civilization. In 1859, we had one hit the earth powerful enough that the telegraph system became self-powered for a while before burning itself out. Fortunately, at that time, that was pretty much the extent of our electrical infrastructure, so the damage didn't do too much to civilization. If one hit today, without any warning, every system on long spans of wire would be fried. We'd lose a massive amount of infrastructure. No refrigeration for food distribution, large chunks of communication infrastructure gone, massive amounts of manufacturing capacity gone. Pretty much every aspect of life would be affected. And without that infrastructure, we almost certainly don't have the capacity to rebuild the infrastructure before people start starving to death. And once people start starving, things are likely to go downhill pretty quickly. You might be wondering what are the odds that we'll ever see another solar storm that large? And the answer is that we already have. On July 23rd of 2012, a similarly sized solar flare missed the Earth by nine days. In the last few decades, we've added in some early warning systems and protocols to give us a chance of surviving. Basically, we'll get about 45 minutes warning to disconnect as much of the electrical grid as we can, then hope enough of it survives. Story 25. Not necessarily facts, but theories that could be proven fact. Higher dimensional beings. Visualize if there was a 2D person. If you gaze at them in a specific way, they can't see you. All you have to do is look from a top view, and they would not know you are there, and they would never know. Living their life as 2D, they would never be capable of comprehending how something could be viewed down on them. Now visualize a 4D person. They could be observing you from a four-dimensional angle, an angle that you will never comprehend. They could be right alongside you, but you would not know, and you would never know. Just as we could interact with a 2D person, the 4D person could interact with us. But as long as they do not want us to, we could never interrelate with them or not even know of them. Fermi Paradox. Let's say there is an anthill in the middle of the forest, and right next to the anthill, we are constructing a 10-lane superhighway. And the question is, would the ants be capable of comprehending what a 10-lane superhighway is? Would the ants be capable of comprehending the technology and the purposes of the beings constructing the highway next to them? So, it is not that we cannot pick up the signals from Planet X using our technology, it is that we cannot even understand what the beings from Planet X are or what they are trying to do. It is so beyond us that even if they actually wanted to educate us, it would be like trying to teach ants about the internet. When Pizarro entered Peru, did he stop for a while at an anthill to attempt to communicate? Was he generous, trying to help the ants in the anthill? Did he become aggressive and slow his original mission down in order to smash the anthill apart? Or was the anthill of complete and utter and eternal insignificance to Pizarro? That might be our condition here. Sixth mass extinction. We are at present living through what many biologists consider to be the sixth mass extinction that the world has ever experienced. This is going to be a stimulating puzzle for the species that comes after us. It was not until around the year 1800 that humanity touched a population of 1 billion after thousands and thousands of years. In the 215 years since then, the world population has increased to 7.2 billion. That exponential growth has very big and long-lasting negative effects on our planet, 
and will continue to do so until we reach carrying capacity or die off. Story 26. If we statistically understood how close we were to dying just about every time we did anything, we'd likely not do anything. My cousin died in a senseless car accident this summer. He was on his way to work, down a country road not all that well-traveled, and one he's driven for the better part of half a century. Some ass hate was behind a van in the other lane and didn't care he was in a no-passing zone. He broke the speed limit and went to pass, pulled out right in front of my cousin, and had a head-on collision, killing him instantly. After his death, I just kept thinking about how specific the scenario had to be. If he'd needed to piss, or had a second bowl of cereal, if he'd dropped his keys, or checked the mail that one last time, he'd have missed being in that spot at that specific time. So many things had to go just exactly right for him to die in that scenario. It's improbable as hell. And yet, they did.